Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome Mr. Chad Davis for getting primed for your life with smart food. Let us give him a round of applause. Okay, good afternoon and happy Mother's Day to the mothers. Okay, my, my name is Chad. Can you hear me okay? Okay, great. Now, as you can see, um, my, I'm from Primed for Your Life. Um, it's a business that I created two years ago. And to put simply, it's eating real food. Um, it's not eating food from uh, packets. It's not buying convenience food, junk food, junk water, um, and other things like that. So it's basically getting back to how your great-grandparents used to live. And unfortunately, your great-grandparents live, will live and are living, lived a better quality life than what this current generation is, unfortunately. So what I want to do today is just take you through how. Um, a lot of people, most people know that sugar is bad for you. People now are beginning to realize that things like grains um, and having too much rice is not good. Those products are sugar in your body. So what I want to do is I want to give you practical ways on how to uh, eat real food. Because of course it's very convenient to go to McDonald's or to go to the shop and buy a packet of pasta. Unfortunately, when you do that, when you take the easy option, you're not feeding your body or your brain properly. If you do that, you're actually hurting the ones you love. I'm sorry, but there's a better way. Um, and unfortunately, like I said, this current generation is not having a good quality lifestyle that's more in terms of a death style. Um, they are lacking energy, bad quality skin, not living life to the fullest. And I'm sure these two young fellas here want to live a long life, right? Yeah? Their mum, you want them to be happy and healthy, right? Honestly, the way that you do that is through real food. Um, primed for your life, people who have type 2 diabetes soon do not have it when they eat real food. Ladies who have um, period pain, say even 10 or 9 out of 10, soon have 0 out of 10. People who are hypertensive get off their medicines. I just came from Davao where I'm working with a um, banana company exporting bananas and one of the gentlemen in 18 days of eating real food lost 15 pounds. Um, another driver who drives for the company lost six kilos in 18 days. And what did he do? He ate real food. He, he ate more eggs. He ate okra. He ate things like malungai. He didn't go to the store and buy a packet of pasta. He didn't get instant noodles. Um, so again, that's all I'm advocating. Um, is that to get your bread, a better brain and a better body, you have to feed yourself better quality food. It's as simple as that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to demonstrate some of the recipes and ways that you can go about that. Um, there you can see your genetics load the gun, lifestyle pulls the trigger. Just because your mum or your dad or your brother has diabetes does not mean that you will. If they are hypertensive, or they have a lot of these health issues today, it's because they are eating the wrong food. If you eat what they're eating, and you have a bad quality lifestyle, then you're inviting disease, unfortunately. If you want to get healthy, you can. You are not restricted by what your mum and dad did, unless you eat the same food. So. It's really true. Every time we eat and drink, we are either feeding disease or fighting it. I used to feed disease. Um, I used to train, overtrain doing triathlon. Um, I used to drink Gatorade. I used to have pasta and lots of noodles, and I was fat. My, I was about 75 kilos or 160 pounds more, and I was not healthy. I was lazy in the afternoon. Um, and even though I was doing all this training, it wasn't helping me to get the body I wanted. So when I actually started to eat real food, um, cook more, um, and actually train less, I became healthy. 
um, and it's very, very attainable. Um, for instance, one of my clients in Davao, just in 18 days, he lost three kilos. So he was already quite healthy, but then his skin improved. He has more energy in the afternoon. So it's absolutely possible for all of you, um, and it's really as simple as eating more eggs and having more quality food. Does anyone want to come through and grab a seat? No? Okay, now, if you keep good food in your fridge, you will eat good food. In my house, we have no pasta. We have no bread. We do not stock white flour. White flour, unfortunately, is not healthy. I'm sorry to say. We use coconut flour. The Philippines is the land of the coconut. So why not get your coconut, grind it down, and use coconut flour? It's a real food product. White grains or um, flour is not real food. It has to go to a factory to be processed. And um, maybe you did or didn't know this, but before they harvest the flour, which is actually the seeds of grasses, grains are from a grass. Before they harvest it, they spray it with poison. Okay, so every time you have bread, pasta or noodles, you are consuming poison. Um, I didn't know that before. I do not want to eat poison. I do not want my children to eat poison. And I promise you, it's true. They spray it with Roundup. Roundup has glyphosate, and that is in your food. So that's why you can never really be healthy. If you're eating a lot of bread, pasta, or noodles, I'm afraid to say that you will either become unhealthy or you are unhealthy already. And you, all you have to do is substitute the white flour with coconut flour. We eat banana pancakes. We eat great food. We don't eat fake food. Um, you can just see here from our fridge, we have lots of boiled eggs, bananas, coconut water, avocado, cream cheese, lots of seafood, lots of fresh, healthy vegetables. This is how your grandparents used to eat. Okay, they used to go out in the sun they would go out and enjoy life, get their hands dirty. They weren't hiding under umbrellas. They were not opening packets of food and thinking that was nourishing them. Because if you eat food from a packet, it's got added sugar, it has added vegetable oil, it's got poisoned grains, and usually as well also soy products, which I'm, I'm sorry to say are not also healthy for you as well. So. How do we go about this lifestyle? Simple, primed banana pancakes made with homemade coconut flour. So you get eggs, you have bananas, and you mash your bananas. You whisk your eggs, and then you add coconut flour. Fry it in um, coconut oil or butter, and it's beautiful. That was my breakfast this morning. If you went to, if you had white flour, I'm afraid white flour is the same as sugar, exactly the same in your body. But it's worse than sugar because they poisoned it before they harvested it. White flour also blocks the absorption of nutrients in your stomach. So if you have a banana with that white flour, you did not, you might have eaten all of the banana, but you did not get the nutrients. The white flour blocks the nutrient absorption in your body. The white flour also causes holes in your stomach. Fact. It's like, if you, would you drink a glass of water with um, bits of um, glass inside? No. When you have white flour, it's very similar. It causes holes in your stomach. And that's why we have the epidemic of allergies at the moment. Food that should be absorbed goes into your body where it should not go. So really, white flour, I'm sorry to say, what makes pasta, bread, and noodles, and crackers, it's not good for you. Give those up, I promise you, your life improves immediately. And what I'm here to show you is to hopefully convince you to try, but I will show you how, okay? Now, does anyone here want to try banana pancake? Okay, so 
this beautiful young lady here. This is banana pancake made with coconut flour, bananas, and egg for you. And it's very, very healthy for you, cooked in coconut oil. So all of the mums, hopefully we can try. Look, there's a beautiful mum over here, Sophia. Okay, and the boys, I think you should try, right? One for you. And we'll give your mum the big one. So I'll have other things for you guys to try. So what did you think? Taste all right? Yep. And again, remember when you eat, you're either feeding disease or you are fighting it. I, I want to fight disease. And also, I want food that fills me up. Because when you eat white flour, you spike your blood sugar, which will make you hungry when it crashes again. That's why a lot of Filipinos and Australians were hungry all the time. That is not normal. If you're hungry all the time and you lack energy in the afternoon, you are abnormal. I'm sorry to say, it's not normal. Your food should satiate you, fill you up, and it should keep you going all day. Um, I was explaining before to my friend that um, I personally can run to my meetings 42 kilometers in one day in the sun in the Philippines without eating. I do not need to eat all day. When I was in Davao yesterday, I had a 20-hour fast because I ate a very good quality breakfast and then I just ate again the next day. Um, would you believe as well that here is, I think, 12 eggs, yeah, free-range eggs. Guess how many I can eat in one sitting? Eight? No. Um, one of my clients is called Sean Anthony, professional basketball player. Um, he plays for the NLEX Road Warriors. Very good. When he went primed, he got better. When he ate real food, his performance improved. Yep. My son and I both ate 20 eggs for breakfast one day. Yep. So we ate 20 eggs. Do you think we were hungry at lunch? No, right? But you eat pandasal and you have rice with your tocino and you're hungry three hours later, right? The reason you're hungry is because you spiked your sugar. When your sugar goes up, so does insulin. Insulin is fat storage hormone. You eat rice, bread, rice is not so bad. Bread I would avoid completely. But when you eat your bread, besides all of the other bad things, you're going to be storing fat. And your body does not get the nutrients. So your body thinks you're starving, right? And it will force you to eat more. That's why you get hungry. But you eat 10 eggs or five eggs or whatever it is, you will feel full and you can last until your next meal. You do not have to snack all the time. I'm sorry to say, but snacking all the time is not normal. You should not. Because every time you're snacking, you're still spiking your blood sugar. Your digestion needs a day off sometimes, right? It shouldn't, you shouldn't be digesting your food all, the, all day, right? You need to give that a break. So again, if you eat real food, you can actually last longer. And then, remember, you've got free room in your brain to do other things. You don't have to cook. You don't have to do the dishes all the time. You just eat less because you ate better quality. It's as simple as that. Now, uh, any questions at all, please feel free. I'd love to hear from you, and we can answer them as we go. And just to let you know, my clients for Primed for Your Life include doctors. Doctors who have reversed their diabetes. Doctors who used to have very bad eyesight now have less prescription glasses. Nurses in the US are my clients who used to be hypertensive, have diabetes medicine, no more. And it's quite simple, eat real food. Eat real food like your grandparents used to do when they were healthier than what we are now, okay? It's sad, with all our modern technologies, we're getting sicker, right? It's not good, we need to change that. Eggs Benedict, okay? But I do not put bread underneath my eggs. 
I can put avocado. I can put cheese. I could put, um, there's a tuna patty there. So again, every time, and I was the same as you guys, I used to eat breakfast cereal. I used to have bread and pasta, and I was fat, okay? I was lazy as well, unfortunately. Now that I eat real food, I'm a small, and I have more energy, and I'm happier than I've ever been. And I have thousands of clients worldwide that have the same thing, okay? Um, so, Eggs Benedict, guys, you can really eat more eggs. There's no limit. And if somebody says, ah, oh, but what about my cholesterol? I will say, you cannot even spell cholesterol. You do not know what it is. I'm sorry. That's a fact. Some doctors or some drug company made up this cholesterol myth, and it's not true. Your, guys, just to let you know, your brain is 65% fat. So your body is 70% water. So what do you have to drink? If your body is 75%, 70% water, what should you drink? Water, yeah. Not Coke, right? Not Gatorade, not fruit juice, water. Coconut water is cool, okay? So you do the maths. Your body is 70% water, you have to drink water. If your brain is 65% fat, what should you eat? Fat, right? When we ate fat, we were healthy. When we started eating convenience garbage, we became unhealthy. That's a fact. Every single one of my clients that eats more quality fat, still carbohydrates, green vegetables, squash, carrots, real food, not fake food from a packet. Then you get healthy. Your brain is made up of cholesterol. Your body produces cholesterol. It makes it. How can it be bad for you? So just to let you know, two weeks after I did my, ate my 20 eggs, I had my cholesterol tested. Fantastic. Better than anybody in this whole Glorietta. I would mark my words. Nobody has better cholesterol than me. I can eat 20 eggs in one sitting. And just to let you know, it's in um, Nigi Nigi, where you, in Boracay, where you can eat as many eggs as you want. And the record is 44 eggs. My son and I are going back in July, and we're going to eat 50 eggs each. Right? So we're going to get the record. So just to let you know. Um, and we will be healthier and stronger than ever. Okay? Eggs are good for you. Okay, here we go. Roasted, um, primed sardines in vegetable oil with roast veggies. Does that look good? Squash, right? Cook, roasted with onion and garlic. And then you add some sardines on top. Sardines and vet fish are superfood. We should eat a lot more of these um, seafoods. They give us more energy, pound for pound, than any other food. When you choose to eat bread, pasta, or noodles, it's actually negative energy because it's toxic. It's a poison. So why would you eat bread when you could have had more sardines? Why would you eat noodles when you could have had Kang Kong? Why would you have crackers when you could have had an egg? If you choose the cheap option, you're gonna have cheap results. I'm sorry. And you just have to look around and look at the people who are sick and you know what they're eating. And if you are sick, then this is, you are eating the bad foods, okay? So again, keep it simple, eat more eggs, eat more seafood, eat more vegetables. That's it, simple. This one's good. And this one here, this is my favorite coffee. It's iced coffee, um, coffee with um, ice cubes, a little bit of cinnamon, and then coconut milk. Coconut milk rocks, right? It's got good, healthy fats. It feeds your brain. It feeds your body, okay? Um, any questions? None so far? Now, this one here is called primed kimbap wrap. And what I'd like to do is, this beautiful young lady right here, you're going to come up with me if that's okay. We're gonna do a little demonstration. Okay, so this one is my favorite dish. If you can come around this side. So I'm just gonna, I'll talk you through it. Okay, so guys, you go to the Korean market and you buy nori sheets. Okay, this is seaweed. Seaweed is very good for you, okay? 
then what you do with your seaweed, you can actually get the sheet and you can eat it straight. Yeah, it's very nice. You can also fry it in your fry pan with olive oil and a little bit of sea salt. Very nice. But my favorite way is to put the shiny side, and you just buy this from your Korean or local market. It's even sold here at Landmark. So you have the shiny side down, and then what you do with that is, I've already prepared my Misson Plus. I have cream cheese, yeah, Philadelphia cream cheese. I have some kimchi. I have some cucumber and some carrots. I could add sardines, you could add lettuce. So basically I'm gonna have a sandwich, but instead of bread, which is poisoned grains, I'm gonna make with seaweed, which is good for you. Okay, so all you're going to do here is just grab this one like that and just spread it across there. Okay, and now what's your name? Jamie. Jamie. Jamie's very pretty, right? This guy here from Singapore, he's a lucky man, <laughs> right? Yes. So you can spread, oh, you can use the whole lot. Yep. Yep, use the back of the spoon and you put, you can put a lot. Guys, just so you know, cream cheese and kimchi are a match made in heaven. The cream cheese is creamy. The kimchi is um, spicy and it's a fermented vegetable. You can last in your fridge for one year, right? You also buy that from the Korean market. Okay, great. Yep, perfect. Now, <laughs> what we'll do now is we'll use this one and we will put the kimchi, just spread it across the middle. Yep. So we now we're going to, we've put the cream cheese down and now we're going to put the kimchi down as well. And if you're, if you're not used to kimchi, it's, some, it's an acquired taste. Um, it can be quite spicy, but guys, it's very good for your stomach. It's called a probiotic and it helps you with your um, gut um, to build up good bacteria in your gut. Okay, perfect, well done. Now what we'll do is, we're just going to put some cucumber across there and then the carrot sticks as well. Okay, so simple like that. Jamie's doing a great job there. And this dish, to make one of these, cost less than um, 30 pesos. It's not expensive, per piece. So you can eat two for lunch and you're full. There's no rice, there's no bread, there's no pasta, there's no crackers, it's all real food. And that's when you can put some tuna on top. You could put salmon, you could put sardines, okay? You would not put tuna in vegetable oil. The reason is that vegetable oil is bad for you, unfortunately. If you're going to have any oils, make them coconut oil, avocado oil, which is expensive, or olive oil. Please avoid vegetable oils. They are not made from vegetables. They are made from seeds and they are toxic in your body. Yep, they, they constrict your arteries immediately upon eating vegetable oils. Okay, wow, great job, beautiful. Thank you very much. Now, we're not done yet. All we're going to do now is, generally what you do here is, you just put some water on this one. Actually, I'll, do, I'll show you. So what we're gonna do now is, we're just gonna roll it. So I'm gonna fold it this way, and then fold it in, and then bring the mat back. Simple like that, okay? And then it will just pat it down. And remember, you could put lettuce inside. You could put leftover chicken. You could put pork. You can put whatever you want. Really, really tasty. Now, there you go. You don't have to have the mat. This is a Japanese um, sushi mat. It's good? Cool, cool. Now, what, what's your husband's name again? Kiel. 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 Come, come up here, you get to try one also. This is your wife's first time to make kimbap wrap. So it has to go in your mouth all at once. Now be, be honest, what did you think? It's good. Um, like just the right mix of spiciness and the creaminess of the cheese, cream cheese. Okay, good. See, that's the cream cheese and the kimchi spicy go together. Right, so what I'm asking you is, why would you eat a sandwich which will spike your blood sugar cause holes in your stomach, holes in your brain, make you hungry when you can eat real food. It's your choice. It doesn't, you can see it took one minute, right? Very simple to prepare, very delicious. So if you choose to eat fake food, 
you will get bad results. Invest in yourself and eat proper food and you'll feel more full. Thanks, great job. Nice. Did you like it? All right, here, let's go. Let's get KL's opinion. Yeah, um, it's quite delicious. So I suggest everyone to try it as well. <laughs> okay, any questions so far? Is it, is it difficult? No, you didn't have to cook anything. A oh, question, please. I don't mind if there's any hard questions also. I've presented to the doctors of St. Luke's. I've presented to my clients are doctors and nurses. So please, sir. Hello. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Hi, Chad. About, about the eggs, uh, is it always better to eat uh, hard-boiled eggs than fried eggs? Okay, great question. What I would say is the, the best egg to eat is, in my opinion, an omelet. The reason is because a boiled egg is very good, no question. But it's better if you have your boiled egg with a piece of cheese. So imagine you can have an omelet where you whisk your eggs, you put coconut oil in your pan, because then you're eating the egg and the coconut oil. But in your egg mix, you could put salt, Himalayan salt, or just ni nice salt. Pepper, you could add turmeric, which is very, very good for you, anti-inflammatory. And then when you're cooking your omelet, you could put some malungai on top, maybe some tomato. So what you're doing there, not, you're not just eating the egg, but you're eating the egg with the coconut oil, with the malungai, with the tomato. So you're actually getting more nutrients. So thanks, a great question, sir. Because unfortunately, a lot of people are overfed, but undernourished, which means that they're fat, right? But they haven't got enough nourishment to fight disease. So what we want to do is we want to eat food that nourishes our brain and our body. For instance, the two young boys. Uh, Mum, unfortunately, if you give your sons brec um, uh, breakfast cereal, it's a bad option because breakfast cereal is full of additives, chemicals and preservatives. It's got extra sugar. It's got extra grains, which is the same as sugar. And then it's also got some other bad products inside. Imagine you could, and then when their sugar crashes, they cannot concentrate anymore. Imagine if you gave them eggs. In the morning, they're full, they're satisfied. They can study harder. They will have a better mood. Um, I have had clients who have had ADHD disappear. Besides diabetes, hypertension, gout, period pain, dysmenorrhea. Um, so please, guys, it's up to you. I know it's convenient to get a packet of breakfast cereal, to get a packet of noodles, but you can just see from this one here, it's not difficult to make real food. And that's what I'm trying to show you today. Just spend a little bit more effort, a little bit of planning, and you can get a lot better results. Any more questions? Thank you for your question, excellent. So please feel free to offer more questions. but you would try to introduce some green vegetables. Um, so really, egg is almost the perfect food. What I would suggest... Yeah, definitely. You could have... We sometimes have eggs for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, it's really a superfood. And just get, try to get the best eggs you can afford. I hope that answers your question. Uh, but, then, but please, no bread with those eggs. Because if you have bread, you might eat three eggs, but only two and a half will be absorbed because the bread blocks the absorption. The holes in your stomach will also see some of the egg go into your body. That's why people have egg allergies. It's not because of the egg. It's because of the cheap food that accompanied the egg, unfortunately. Great question, thank you. So here, that kimbap wrap. Now we've got Again, just to answer the gentleman's question, what we do at home is, sometimes if I'm making omelet, I'll make two. So I will not make one. My second omelet, I put in the fridge. 
and the next day I refry that omelette in butter. Then I've got coconut oil, egg, butter, and the ingredients in the omelette. So even better for my brain. Because remember, my brain is 65% fat. I need to have fat. It fills you up, it feeds your brain. Okay, now this is my absolute favorite, kini lao. Um, I'll explain it this way. What I do now is, I make, now everyone here is familiar with kini lao, right? It's a Filipino favorite. It's my favorite dish in the whole world, without doubt. What you do is, you get a lot of onion, garlic, and ginger. Chop, 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 a lot. Then you get your tomato, cucumber, radish, maybe pomelo, maybe zucchini, maybe even okra. And you put all of that together, mix, mix. Then on top, you add olive oil. Then you can add coconut vinegar. The vinegar preserves it. The vinegar will make that eventually, when you put it in the fridge, it will pickle and it lasts a long time. And then you can add some calamansi or lemon juice. So what I do is I make a vegetable kinilao. And when I put that in my fridge, I have a big batch. Even if I forget it for one week, within one week it has got better because it fermented a little bit. It's still fresh, it's still delicious. And then when I'm ready, I can add some sardines on top. I could add anchovies. I could put boiled egg. So what I would suggest is that every day in your fridge, you should put some boiled eggs. Every day in your fridge, you should have a serve of kinilao. So when you're hungry, you can just get that. Don't reach for a packet of noodles because that's not real food. That will make you sick. You can have kinilao prepared on your day off and you make a big batch. And then for breakfast, you can have it with boiled egg. Come home from work and you can have it with a can of salmon or some fresh fish or some pork or some chicken. It's very versatile. So if you plan ahead, this lifestyle is very easy. Okay? What do you think of that dish? Sounds good, right? It's my favorite. I love kini lao. And you can, it goes very well with avocado as well. This one, Bagna Caude sauce. It's the favorite of Pope Francis. So what I do there is, the sauce is actually olive oil mixed with butter, anchovies and garlic. And you mix that together, keep that in your fridge, and then you can stir fry seafood with it. You can cook your omelet inside that sauce. Because remember, your brain is 65% fat. Fat, good quality fat, fills you up. So you're not hungry all the time. So you make this sauce, olive oil, butter, garlic, and anchovies. It's in your fridge. It lasts for a very, very long time. And it's very versatile. You can cook eggs in it. You can cook your seafood, your vegetables. It's delicious. And it's the favorite of the Pope. So that must say something. Okay, here we go. I have curry, but I don't add rice. Because rice, I like rice, but I have it very limited. Because rice is still sugar. Um, my son eats more rice than I do because he's younger. His metabolism is better than mine. So what I do is my carbohydrate here is the squash. My carbohydrate is the banana. My carbohydrate is the spinach or malungai. So I actually can eat more quality food because I didn't dilute it with rice. My nutrients is higher. As soon as you add rice, you're reducing the nutrient load that you're going to have for your body. And if you're a young, young fella, you can eat the rice. But if you've got diabetes, if you're sick, I would not eat the rice because you need more nutrients. So this one will give you a lot of nutrients. Always cooked in onion and garlic. We love onion and garlic in our house. Now that's the sushi I showed you before. Um, again, you can have carrot sticks, lettuce, other things like that. Filipino fried rice, okay? So here, what I did was, just to show you, you can get a carrot and you grate it with a cheese grater, yep. You can get the broccoli stalk, which you probably might throw away, and you grate it, yep. You can get cauliflower, you can get squash, you can have zucchini, 
um, other things like that. And when you grate them, they be resemble rice. So instead of having rice, which is sugar, you can actually have real vegetables. And what makes this dish good is that you fry those vegetables in coconut oil and you add salt and pepper. And then on top, you can put egg. On top, you could put bacon, you could put chicken. And what you do is you make a big batch so that you've got some for breakfast the next morning. So again, think ahead. Do not, if you have a fridge at home, make more so that you can make your life easier the next day. That's what the kini lao is about. You make the kini lao in a big batch so that you can then have it tomorrow without having to go through a lot of food preparation. Any questions? Any more questions? Yes. I read, I read on the internet that some say pork is bad for you. Is that true? Okay, excellent question. Is pork good or bad for you? The answer is it depends. If I was a diabetic and I was fat, I would eat seafood instead of pork. Seafood is the number one. If I was a healthy person and the pork was very good quality, I would eat it and I eat pork. However, did you know what, what now I'll ask you a question. What, do they, what does a farmer feed a pig to make it fat? Do you know? Feeds, what does the feeds have in it? Grains. If, if a farmer wants to make a pig fat, they feed it grains. If I wanted to make you fat, I would buy you a donut. But I will make you fat and sick. If I want to make you fat, I'll give you some bread. Because that's what a farmer does. If he wants to make a pig fat, he'll feed it grains. Yeah, for more money. But then, unfortunately, that fat pig, it's not just fat, it's sick. So then that's why they have a vet, to give it antibiotics. So when you eat a fat pig, you're quite often eating a sick pig that's got antibiotics. But it can afford more eggs. <laughs> so yeah, did that answer your question? You're welcome, thanks. Any more questions? Yeah, please. How about eating, uh, eating raw, uh, raw vegetable like cucumber, uh, okay. carrot, yep. uh, tomato, and then rice? Yep. Oops. Excuse me. Um, the question was about eating raw food. For sure. What we want to do is we want to eat real food. So a tomato, a carrot, a cucumber, this is all good food. Um, of course, the optimal is organic, um, is, that's the best you can find, I guess. But if not, we buy ours from Landmark. Um, and it's, it's good food. And again, if you're eating more tomato and cucumber instead of bread, without doubt, you have more nutrients. Because the bread is low on nutrients. There's not much in bread except sugar. So when you eat raw vegetables, you're actually having more nutrients. So you're feeding your heart, your brain much better. So excellent question, thanks. Okay, keep going. Vegetable lasagna. So we don't use plastic pasta sheets made from poisoned grains. We get zucchini and we slice it thin. We get, um, we get uh, eggplant, squash, and then we can put tomato, not tomato sauce made from a packet, but we make our own tomato sauce. Onion, garlic, and tomato. How hard is it? Right? You just have to plan ahead. So again, what I'm saying is, don't get lazy. Don't get all your food from a packet because the results are not going to be ideal. And we, we love our children. We love our loved ones. The least we can do is give them proper food. And when you get into the habit, it becomes easy, I promise. Um, and again, so again, that's why here we've got cans of tuna. We use tuna, this one, century tuna in water. Again, not vegetable oil, because vegetable oil is not healthy. Uh, broccoli and cauliflower rice. Okay, so just use the cheese grater, and then you cook that in the oven with olive oil. Very simple. Ratatouille, real food, vegetables. Zucchini noodles with chicken. So I get a zucchini and I slice it. So you can actually use this thing here. You can just buy that for 100 pesos in the kitchen department at Landmark. And you get this one and you go like that. So simple. 
You can do it with carrot, you can do it with zucchini, right? And that's it. And then it becomes noodles. So it does everything that pasta can do, except there's one difference. It's not poison, <laughs> right? The vegetable has probably got nutrients. It's good for you. You buy pasta, yes, it's easy, but I'm afraid it's also poison, in my opinion, right? And they actually spray it with poison before harvest. Okay, oops, stay. Zucchini noodles, we have stir fry with chili. Um, we make pizza. So from my broccoli and cauliflower rice, I add cream cheese, I add eggs, salt and pepper, maybe a little bit of coconut flour, but you don't have to, and I make pizza. So imagine you ring up for a pizza and they make it for you. How much nutrient value do you think that pizza has? Come on, it's a lazy option, yep. So again, if you want to have a better brain, a better body, well, you're gonna have to put in a little bit of effort, I'm sorry, right? Don't call up for the pizza because it's not healthy for you. Their job is to make it as cheaply as possible and make as much profit as possible. Your job is to have a proper body and a proper brain. It's up to you, okay? This is easy. It only takes me 20 minutes to make a pizza, okay? Bone broth. We use our chicken bones and our um, beef bones, and we make soup. Adobo on cauliflower rice, okay? We don't have generally white rice. Occasionally my son, because he's 13, strong. But for me, I try to avoid it because I don't want my sugar to spike so much, okay? Filipino sisig, right? First time I got pig's ear and I chopped up my pig's ear. <laughs> I did it once, I didn't mind it, but I won't eat it again. <laughs> once was enough for me. And then I just had it with fried egg. Homemade coconut flour. This one, guys, it's easy. You go to the market and you say to the guy behind the coconut stall, can you please chop the coconut in half? And then he gets a little bit of milk and then he grinds it, right? <laughs> then you get the desiccated coconut. You take it home and you put it on and then you squeeze the rest of the milk out. And you can use that milk with cabbage and make a, co um, a cabbage coconut dish with chicken or whatever else. Then, once you've dried out the coconut, you um, squeeze it out, dry it, and then you just use a grinder, like a coffee grinder, and you make coconut flour. Then you can make banana pancakes. You can do so many different dishes with it. We make cookies. We do so many great dishes with ours. So it's easy, it's good for you, and it's not white flour, which is less than healthy. We, um, I do triathlons, I do Ironman events, where I swim four kilometers, I bike 180 kilometers, and then I run a marathon, and I do it on coconut oil, right? Just like this. So I don't need to have Gatorade, which is sugar, nine teaspoons of sugar. I don't, yeah, nine te a Coke has 10 teaspoons of sugar. Gatorade has nine, right? They could put in eight, but Gatorade put in nine just to make sure that you're addicted to their product, right? So please, guys, drink water, have coconut water. Don't support companies that hurt your children, right? I do not. Um, I can use my own homemade coconut, um, homemade gel, and I use um, honey, prune juice, coconut oil, and I can do a whole marathon on that. I do my events with just straight coconut oil. I do not need sugar. You do not need sugar, okay? You need real food. This one, berry coconut milk magic. So what you do is, remember your coconut milk from your desiccated coconut? You put that in a, in a bowl, you can add some frozen berries or some mango, and you add chia seeds. Put it in the fridge, 20 minutes later you have a mousse. Delicious, it's dessert. We eat dessert. We do not deprive ourselves just because we don't eat grains and sugar. We eat the best food for our body and our brain. We have um, coconut cake with banana, mousse, Primed chocolate fruit balls. 
made with nuts, dried fruit, coconut, flour, egg. And you can add cocoa, co cacao inside as well. We have dark chocolate brownies. We make our own chocolate. It's not hard. Add some egg and you've got, you, then you add your nuts and or dried fruit. It's easy. Um, all of the recipes I have also. I'll give you some information at the end for those interested to know more about my business, Prime for Your Life. Um, what I do is I try to help people to live longer and live better. Um, and I let you know what foods to eat and what not to eat. But sometimes that's not enough because it's easy to say, don't eat bread, don't eat grains, that's easy. But how can you then apply that? And I'm hoping that's what I've shown you today, that you don't have to revert to fake food. You can actually eat real food easily. And that's what I do. I help companies, I help doctors, I help nurses, I help people all over the world, and they get healthy doing this. Chocolate ice cream, very nice. Malago, uh, malungai, malungai rocks, guys. We should eat malungai every day. It's a superfood, just like coconut oil. You can make it into tea, dry it and make it into tea. So simple. Okay. Iced coffee with coconut milk. Okay. Um, I also do cooking lessons. Um, one of my clients, I went into his house and I got rid of all of his garbage food. Anything with vegetable oil, anything with grains, anything with sugar, anything with um, soy. We, threw, we gave away 100,000 pesos of food that he had in plastic bags and plastic containers and boxes. Why? Because it's gonna hurt him. It will cost him more in the end when he has to go to hospital, when he has to have his drugs. And that's the way a lot of people are living these days. Drugs don't help, they merely mask the problem. If you have issues, it's your lifestyle. Get more sun, eat proper food, and your issues will go away most of the time. So I help families, helpers, children, how to cook. So great dishes, kinilau here, um, chocolate, um, banana cake, uh, cauliflower rice, boiled eggs. It's easy, it's not hard. Um, some other great dishes, omelette, rack of lamb, and we eat the fat off the lamb. My whole family is healthy. Again, so yeah, please do not eat vegetable oil. If you have vegetable oil at home, just use it for squeaky doors and polishing your shoes. It's not good for anything else, okay? Um, and also, um, if anyone wants more information, I'm happy to share with you why soy products are not healthy, why vegetable oil is not good for you. I have all the evidence, all the proof. Um, coconut oil, olive oil, the, and butter, they're some of the best items to cook with. Okay, eating out is easy. You just avoid, you can have a burger. So when I go to Wholesome Table, I can eat the burger, no bun, no fries. But Wholesome Table uses coconut oil. They don't use vegetable oil. So again, you just decide to, you can have the sandwich, but no bread. <laughs> You eat, therefore you'd eat a salad, but you'd add lots of nice olive oil on top. Okay, how do you make a cow fat and sick? Feed it grains. Okay, now, we've got um, time for some questions, please. Um, my name is Chad. Um, my business is called Primed for Your Life. I am absolutely passionate about helping Filipinos and people all over the world to live longer. The reason I'm so passionate is that I believe we have been lied to. We've been told that there's healthy whole grains. Milo told us to give our children Milo. We should not, it's sugar. It's a packet of sugar. And we've been told to um, avoid the sun. That's a lie. We need the sun. The darker your skin, the more you need the sun. So what I'm trying to do is to teach people and to guide them and then you can either take my advice or not. The ones who do, and I have thousands of clients worldwide, they get healthy. Just this week, I came back from Davao yesterday. My company, a banana export farming company, 
um, in 18 days, one of their staff lost 15 pounds. Their skin is better. They have more energy. I want that for everyone. Um, so yeah, please, questions? Any questions? Any violent reactions? Sir? Uh, you have some kind of template uh, as to what uh, cancer patients would eat. Ah, okay. Um, yeah, definitely. Well, I think it's fairly well established that sugar feeds cancer. I think most people know that. So therefore, if you eat food that has, doesn't contain sugar, more seafood, more green vegetables, what you want to do, if you have any problem, I think the best way to combat that is with nutrients, real food, drink more water, get the sun, um, laughter, um, love, but absolutely seafood, real food. You don't want to have sugar if you have any problems. It does, it's not good for you, it's not necessary. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Is there a question here? Yes. Is it okay to eat wheat bread? I know white bread is not good. Okay. In, in my humble opinion, wheat bread and white bread are not good for anything except maybe cleaning your sink, right? I would not eat wheat bread at all because whether it's white or brown, it's a grass that we are ill-equipped to digest. It is also um, poisoned before they harvest it. That's a fact. They spray a poison on the wheat, which is a grass, before they harvest it. It's low in nutrients. Yep, it spikes your sugar. It blocks the absorption of nutrients. It causes holes in your stomach, holes in your brain. You sure you want it? I, I would not. And just try. Just get rid of it, and I bet you within three days you feel better by avoiding that. Your great-grandparents ate real food. That's all I'm saying. This one is a fake food. Eat a proper food, and like the kimbap wrap. Hey, more questions? Yes, sir. Ah, excellent. Okay, um, if you have a can of Coke, in my opinion, you're very, very foolish. You're going to get you're going to have more likelihood of getting diabetes. Gatorade is the same as Coke. Fruit juice is the same as Gatorade, which is the same as Coke. It's a big dump of sugar straight into your bloodstream. You do not want that. So, pi pineapple juice, I would not. Um, I would eat the pineapple, because then you have the fiber with the sugar. So therefore, um, and I'm not against fruit, but if I was overweight and had diabetes, I would not eat bananas. My son eats mangoes because he's healthy. We do not have fruit juice. Um, and if ever, very, very rarely. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Great question. Any more questions? Yes, please. Um, how do you help um, uh, children with ADHD? Ah, very easy. Eat real food. Um, I had one client who, the, the daughter was, is 11 years old, Juliana, and she has um, had learning dis dif difficulties, would fall asleep on the way home in the car, wasn't keeping up. The, in the morning, we gave her four eggs with real food. Her lunch was real food. When she finished school that day, this was two days afterwards of her problems, she said, I kept up with my classmates today. I wasn't sleepy because her sugar remained constant. So it's really simple. Real food feeds your brain, feeds your body. So it's really that simple. Um, I have lots of primed babies, four months old, six months old, they sleep through the night. Their temperament is very good. You do not want to give babies sugar, you do not want to give your dog sugar, which is wheat, unfortunately. We've been told healthy whole grains, I don't think so. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, mother's milk is the best, that's the bomb. But then later on, you can have avocado, you can have real food blended up. That's what's really good for babies. I've got two, or big now. Any more questions? Okay, yes please. Um, I'm a coffee addict. What do you prefer? Healthy? Sure. Um, coffee is fine. Tea, coffee, water. I would drink, whatever water you're drinking, I would double your water. 
So, but coffee is good. I have mine with coconut milk. Or even sometimes goat's milk, because the goat was fed grass. Because I don't want to get my milk from a cow that has been eating grains, which made it fat and sick. So again, um, just try to do the best you can do. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. I'll be hanging around for questions. I've got some uh, information if people want it. Um, I really appreciate everyone listening, um, and I wish you all happy Mother's Day and the best of health. We deserve it. Thank you. Thanks, bro.